ti norske amerikanere har kommet hit til Norge for å konkurrere om å møte sin norske slekt. Her skal de bli kjent med oss nordmenn og landet vi bor i. Og da er jo quick lunch, neilsprett og villmark noe som bare må oppleves. Hva tror du vi gjør denne uken? Maybe we're hiking. We're, I mean, we're getting pretty close to the trees and whatnot, and a good old hike would be really Amazing. great right now. Maybe tro ooh. troll hunting. Troll hunting. Zing. I think my father little heads. <laughs> oh, you think they're little? Oh, I was thinking trolls like little babies. No, when they're babies, but the moms and dad trolls are... Real big. Real big. Vi nordmenn elsker utfordringer. Vi karrer oss opp på de høyeste fjelltopper, og vi går alt for langt på ski. Så nå skal norskamerikanerne få oppleve en ekte ekspedisjon ut på den ville, vakre vidda. Velkommen til Hardanger! So massive. It's incredible. I wonder what lives in there, though. Well, where does the Loch Ness monster live? Not that's, here. Actually, that's in Minnesota. Maybe there's like a Norwegian dragon. What do you think's happening this week? I don't see snow, so... Uh, but I feel like this next week, like, literally won't be complete unless we get Jen, Jen back. back. Yeah. What so, do you think she's doing right now? Do you think she's, like, having, like, the time of her life? I, she, whatever she's doing, she's crying, I'm oh, sure. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Jennifer har nemlig hoppet av bussen og befinner seg i Sognefjorden. Siden hun var på vinnerlaget forrige uke, vant hun en helt unik mulighet til å besøke stedet hennes forfedre forlot da de reiste til USA, den lille bygda Fresvik i Vik kommune. Jeg er på en måte for ord. Dette er beautiful. Så det er den vyen de hadde. Det er fantastisk. Å, my gosh. Hvorfor skulle de leve? Dear Jennifer, this coffee pot used to belong to your three times great-grandfather. Please enjoy a cup of freshly brewed coffee while reading your letter. <laughs> oh, wow. I really needed a cup of coffee. <laughs> this is absolutely awesome. Wow. Dear Jennifer, you are now sitting on the grounds of Testubakken. This place used to be a small holding under the farm shoe garden and is the place your ancestors lived for generations. Your three times great-grandfather Eric lived here with his wife Marta. Eric and Marta had five healthy children, but in 1852, Marta tragically died while giving birth their sixth child. Woo. Burdened by grief, Eric was left to care for his six children all by himself. In 1853, Eric married his second wife, your three times great-grandmother Gertrude. Later that year, your great-great-grandfather, Johannes, was born. Life in Fresvik at this time was challenging. Several mudslides affected the village, and many farmers and smallholders struggled to maintain their crops and produce enough food to feed their families. Well, that would explain why they needed to move. In 1874, life dramatically changed for Johannes. He became a father. Oh, good on you. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, no, but the child was born out of wedlock. Are you kidding me? The child was born out of wedlock, which was frowned upon at the time. Wow, history really kind of... I got 
married twice because getting pregnant um, and not being married was looked at as bad. So I never knew love or romance or anything. I love my children. But the fact that this happened is really trippy. <laughs> when I read all of the huge things that happened to my family, and then so many things that parallel my own life, it was like this beautiful confirmation that it's genetic for us to look tragedy in the eye and while respecting it, that we can move on and we're not gonna give up. In April the same year, the 20-year-old Johannes embarked on a ship from the port of Bergen headed for a new life on the other side of the Atlantic. Although life was hard in Fresnick, some chose to stay, and it is their descendants that lead you to your now living Norwegian relatives. <laughs> Woo, yay. Wow, that's them. Part of your new Norwegian family still lives in Fresvik. Oh, wow. Down by the sea, there's a boathouse that still belongs to the farm. If you win, they would love to arrange a family gathering for you there so that you can all share more of your common history. Well, if that just doesn't put the fire in the belly to win, I don't know what does. That's, that's pretty awesome. I don't think I realized how important this day was to me until it happened. That's just absolutely, wow. It's, it's amazing information. It, it's just the best feeling to feel, you know, that the, the story is kind of complete now. And the only thing to complete it is uh, to actually be able to meet my family, to, to see them in person. And now that I am standing right here where they are, and where the other ones were, uh, I, I want to fight 10 times as hard. Norsk amerikanerne har endelig kommet sig opp på snaufjellet og får for første gang se den majestetiske Hardangervidda. Oh my gosh. This is gorgeous. Wow. What an incredible place. I was blown away by everything about this scenery and uh, anxious to see what they were going to have us do out in this uh, giant snow field. There he is! Oh, it's Jen! Free Jeff and Jen! Yes! Together. Welcome to Hardangevidda. You are now standing on the largest mountain plateau in northern Europe, and it stretches around 3,100 square miles. Whoa! We have the saying in Norway that goes, Nordmen er født med ski på beina. Nordmen er født med ski på beina. That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and that means that Norwegians are born with skis on their feet. And we also love being out in this kind of nature. And that's probably why some of the world's most groundbreaking polar explorers are Norwegians. And I actually share the first name with one of these explorers. Because this is Fritjof Nansen. Oh, oh, hey. <laughs> Nansen's like, he, I'd say he's my kind of guy. A little bit much facial hair, but I'm planning to get naked too. I'm sorry, that's the wrong. This is Fritjof Nansen, but it's the wrong picture. <laughs> Let me see that. <laughs> that's that's better. That's better. <laughs> I've seen you naked. This is Fritjof Nansen. His greatest claim to fame was in 1888, when he was the first person to cross Greenland on skis. Whoa! Wow. Another one is this guy. This is Roald Amundsen. Roald Amundsen. And in 1911, he was the first person to ever set foot on the South Pole. Wow. So it's thanks to these two guys and a host of others that we Norwegians have an intense need 
to go out in the wilderness on skis and climb every mountain. And I think that you are explorers as well. <laughs> Just the fact that you're here on unknown ground, looking for answers and ready to claim your land proves that you are explorers. And as true Norwegians, I think it's time for you to go on your very first expedition across the mighty Hardangivida. I felt really good when Fitjof said that we we're all explorers. And yeah, I am an explorer, and I'm really excited to explore this. But guys, you're not going to be alone out there. So please welcome Alexander Gomme. <gasps> Love. Alexander is like a Norwegian Indiana Jones. Like, dude rolls up in like a damn like dog sled. Like, it's like a freaking movie. Oh. It was like wild. And he like got off so casually, and it was like a perfectly executed dance where he just kind of like glided into it. God, dude's got swag. Hello! Hi! Alexander is one of Norway's most versatile explorers, and he's led expeditions all around the world. So you're going to be in very competent hands. And Alexander, what's the key to a successful expedition? It's all about preparations, uh, having the basic skills, uh, good equipment, and of course, warm, functional clothing. And as true Norwegian explorers, there is one crucial sentence you need to learn. And that is, the finnes ikke dårlig vær, bare dårlig klær. The finnes ikke dårlig vær, bare dårlig klær. Oh, that's good. Very good. <laughs> I'm impressed. The finnes ikke dårlig vær, bare dårlig vær. I got nothing. <laughs> Alexander, ta godt vare på dem. Skal prøve. And you guys have a fantastic trip, okay? And I'll Thank see you, you later. Yeah, Bye. 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 Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Alex. I'm excited. This wouldn't be necessarily the expedition team that I would choose if I was going to go out. Oh my god. I think that people are a lot more used to going out to the club than going out camping. So uh, this will be interesting. You need four. We need ten sleeping bags. <laughs> I don't need four. <laughs> Who has a compass? Me and uh, Nick. The Nick's got the compasses. You don't know where to go? Ask a Nick. I have been a grand total of one time cross country skiing and it was not pretty. I fell on my ass a lot. <laughs> Are we ready? Yeah! All right, let's go, guys. Come on, guys. Yeah, come on, guys, caravan. Guys, we're born with skis on your feet. All right, hold on, give me the, here we go. To be on skis was pretty wild because it was my very first time ever skiing. We're good. Not only was I learning how to ski, uh, but I was learning how to ski with like logs behind me. <laughs> Get out in front of your skis. That. Whoa. Whoa. Oh no! John fell, and so I went over to try and help him, and then I fell. <laughs> okay, okay. And really could not get up. <laughs> oh, no. I'm right I mean, behind you. Oh. <laughs> so to get Linnea up, I decide to pull the back of her backpack. Use, Use your ass. leg. It was almost like the claw that grabs the toy out of the bin. Wait, okay, 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 okay. okay. But it managed to work, and we got, we got her up. Yeah. And she uh, kept on the adventure, so worked out pretty well for her. We got it! Right, it again. Good job. Game on. Are we all together still? No. How are you doing back there, Mark? I'll hang back with you. This sucks not being in shape. Oh, you're doing fine. <laughs> We're gonna climb the mountain. Climb the mountain. All right. We're going up? We're going up. When Alexander said, let's go up that mountain, I was absolutely terrified. It's really high. I just need to catch my breath for a second. Come on, Jen, are you okay? No, yeah, I'm fine, you guys keep going. She doesn't want anybody to take care of her. 
So you kind of have to force yourself onto Jen and say, no, Jen, you need help, and we're going to stick with you, and we're going to support you and be with you. I don't want to bring you guys down, nope, so if you want to... Nope, no, nope. Jen, we're you happy shut being it. Zip it. Oh, my Back God. Zip it. Tamara and Mark were absolute heroes in my book. They were absolutely amazing. We'll get there. Yeah. You're doing great. All right. I couldn't have done it without them. I wouldn't have done it without them. I think I would have turned around and just said, okay, see you later. <laughs> Give us all like a great cheer. Am I allowed to stop now? All right, you can stop here. Can you look behind you? Oh, <laughs> now, yeah. Look at the slope. Now we're on the top and you made it. You know. I told you, you have a great, you have great potential. You're doing absolutely great. And I'm very proud of you. Okay. Thank you for the encouragement. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. I appreciate it. Great work. Thank you. Yeah. I'm so impressed. To the top. Did you notice what happened to the view? Look at me! <laughs> hey, is it beautiful? Yeah. Wow. yeah. The view out there is absolutely sensational and, and breathtaking. Every angle that you were able to see was beyond gorgeous. Men det er ikke bare landskapet som er overveldende. For Daniel vekker også skituren minner om barndommen med faren. This is the kind of stuff I would be doing with him. Because he did this. He went skiing all the time. Cross country skiing in this landscape was really special to me because I know my dad, who passed away when I was 19, um, used to cross country ski a lot and I never got to do it with him. Yeah, I guess he's probably... Uh. So then he's definitely up <laughs> skiing up. It made me miss him a lot. Um, but it also made me really happy. <laughs> but he's, he's climbing with us. I'm finally doing this thing that I know he loved. Uh, like, now that I know how to do this, like, this is something I could do with him. But he did, uh, he did give me the spirit, so I felt his presence, yeah. Are you ready to have some fun? Yeah. Yes. All right, put Always. your skis on, sleds on, backpacks on. We're heading down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Turn go shark a shower. Oh my God, stop looking, Nick. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh no! Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not again. Man, I'm really wishing I did the toboggan. Look at Nick, he's already at the bottom. Going down that hill was definitely terrifying. Oh my God, M my butt's fine. I didn't hit it as hard as some other people. And it happened. Everyone just kind of has little, little booty bruises, I guess would be the, the best way to describe it. I want to tell you, you've made it on the show. Shut up. No, 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 no. Are you... <laughs> oh, my God, shut up. Hello, my name's Dylan Ike. I am Norwegian-American, and I am from St. Paul, Minnesota. The perfect road trip song. If I had to use a few words to describe myself, I would say kind, outgoing, passionate, goofy, sports, <laughs> and considerate. So I've had a wide variety of roles. I teach spin classes, and I even drove around the country in a giant peanut and dressed up as Mr. Peanut himself. <laughs> After my year of traveling across the country in a giant peanut, I really wanted to be closer to my niece and nephew, as well as my entire family, which is here in Minnesota. Yo, what's up? What's up, what's up, what's up? What's up? Family's super important to me, so I decided to move myself back to Minnesota, and I've loved every second of it. Say hi, Norway. Hi, Norway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want you to meet my wonderful sister, Brittany. So, Brittany, what do you think about this crazy adventure that I'm about to go on? Well, I'm really excited mm -hmm. for you, and I think it's just gonna be fun to get in touch with where our family comes from. Going back to my childhood, my main memory would be my grandma, who had like the kiss me, I'm Norwegian button. She sadly passed away when I was in third grade, but she was just the largest personality, which I think I get a lot of that from her. She's like, I think my Norwegian role model, I would have to say. Lucy, where are we going? Are you coming with me? Are you gonna come with me? Are you coming with me? I really can't believe that I'm going, actually. It hasn't even quite hit me yet. All I know is I'm so damn excited to get there. Straks for Tamara, en spesiell overraskelse. It's bizarre.
bizarre and something I would have never thought possible. Og tapelaget fra forrige uke må konkurrere om å få bli i Norge. Det vil mene alt for meg å stå. Norske amerikanerne er på ekspedisjon over Hardangervidda, og nå er det endelig tid for en pust i bakken. Hey, look over there! I hope it's hot cider. Okay, who wants to do it with me? I opened the box and it was like all orange and orange soda and quick lunches. It was like this bright, colorful surprise. Treats! Yay! Exciting, happy. Everyone take a break, sit down and eat. It was awesome. Alexander, do all the... Chocolates come with information on Norwegian adventurers? Well, not all of them, but uh, these are specially made for you. Oh, cool, right. cool. Inside the chocolate bar, it was like Willy Wonka. We opened it up, and there was information on Norwegian adventurers and Norwegian explorers, which was super cool. Erik Rod was a Norse explorer and the first man ever to settle in the land he named Grunland. All right, Norwegian adventurers, I've got Alexander Gamme. <laughs> he was, together with a friend, the first to cross the Sahara Desert by tandem bike. <laughs> what? What? Oh. I didn't know that you could ride a bike across the Sahara, let alone a tandem bike. Not sure I'd be able to do that, but he, he's a special kind of breed. Uh, I have Eric Erikson, was a polar captain, first to both sight and shore King Carl's Land, northeast on the Svalbard Islands. He's also Tamara's three-time great-grandfather. That is so cool. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Three times great-grandfather. That's so weird. Like, just to know family that I didn't even know about. I'm an explorer as well in the modern day times. I don't like to take the road everyone takes. So I think having that type of mentality opens up the possibility for many, many things. And I think I got that from my great, great grandfather. <laughs> I'm Daris. I am the Norwegian American pinup from Vero Beach, Florida. And this is my shop. There you go. I have lots of great dresses here and accessories and hats because if you're not in pinup, you're not having fun. I love being feminine and girly. And I have a group of gals who are called the Parisian Pinups. So everything is Paris because I love Paris, but I am very interested in learning more about my Norwegian history. This is my Norwegian American family. <laughs> How you doing? So mom, are these all the photos that you found? Well, these are ones that I think would be most interesting because these are the best pictures of Pop. My grandfather, called him Pop, was born in Norway. He came to America with his family on a boat. I love these passports. Look at yeah. this. I don't even know if this is what the Norwegian passport looks like yeah. now. I don't Probably know. Probably not. Maybe. Oh, I'm not Pop? sure. Yeah, that's Pop. I remember Pop sitting on the couch. We'd watch cartoons in the morning, and he would curse in Norwegian. FIFA fan was one of the words <laughs> that we said, and of course, we used to run around the house saying that bad word all the time. But we're pulling up to the airport right now. There's just been a lot to get ready to go on this trip, but now I'm here, and now I'm getting some butterflies in my stomach. <laughs> Don't cry. Come on, it's meant to be happy. Very excited to be a part of this, and especially to learn about the history on my Norwegian side. Go have fun. Don't shame the name. Oh my gosh, jeez. I can't even wait. I'm so excited to meet my family in Norway. So I will see you in Norway. En lang dag med mange inntrykk er snart over. Og nå er det på tide for ekspedisjonen å slå leir for natta. All right. This is camp? Yeah, I think this looks like a nice campsite. We have some work to do. All right. So we start with the tents. 
and we'll take it from there. Right, so yellow, we have to open it up. I'm from the Pacific Northwest. Like, I don't go outside and camp in the woods. Well, look at this. All right, I'm impressed. Because it's cold and there's rocks and there's bears. And I don't like any of that. This is amazing. This is so cool. <laughs> going in. All right, All right good night. I think Mother Nature has some serious mood swings and issues because mm -hmm. yesterday was beautiful and sunny and fun and this is not. No, it is not. Waking up to a blizzard was uh, pretty intense. But again, I mean, it just sort of added to the motivation, I guess, to get the hell out of there. <laughs> the conditions are getting worse, so we just need to pack up Get your stuff together. Let's just get out of here. We got it. There was a blizzard hitting us, and I was getting snow and all like uncomfortable places in my body. I was like, "What have I got myself into?" Som den erfarne expeditionsledaren han er, har Alexander selvfølgelig planlagt godt. Det er ikke langt til dyrene ut fjellstova, og der kan slitne norske amerikanere søke ly fra uværet. Hey guys, come here, explorers. All right. We good? Yeah. Come on inside and get some dry clothes on. Yeah. And I'll make you some hot cocoa. How does that sound? Yeah. How does that sound? Okay, guys, help yourselves. Thank you. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Cocos. Yeah, cocoa's coming through. Cocos. Thank you. How are you guys doing? A little warmer now. So much better. Yeah. So much better. Yeah. Alexander? Yes. How's this been? To be honest, I, I didn't have you know, too high expectations. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, Americans, backcountry skiing, you know, and like, no, I don't know. But I mean, this, this team really uh, surprised me. Okay. They amazed me, actually. For Alexander, this kind of weather is just another day in the wild. So he's going back out there. <laughs> thank you so much for everything you've done for them. Yeah, thank, yes. you. Yes. thank you. 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 Thank now is when it's really getting serious, because it's competition time. So the winning team from last week can come with me, and the rest of you can prepare to compete. OK. Come on, guys. Bye. Good luck, okay. you guys. Love you guys. Thank you. I love you all. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Well, I know. It's OK. We'll be good. It's all right. We'll be good. That was sad to see everybody go down. Okay. I just love all you guys so much already. I know. I do not want to go home today. I just don't want to miss out on anything. I want to experience life to the fullest, and I feel like this is a great opportunity to do that. All of us are pretty nervous because this is the first elimination challenge of the season. Uh, we don't know what to expect. This is the Explorer Challenge. And everything that you've learned this week can come to good use. In front of you, there are two oranges. And we Norwegians always bring oranges when we go into the wild. And even with icy cold fingers, we are champion orange peelers. <laughs> so, I will ask you a question, and the person that can make the longest unbroken orange peel in two minutes will get to answer the question. If the answer is right, that person is safe and can join the others. What is it important to have close to your skin when you're out skiing? Ready, set, go. I honestly have never peeled an orange before. That was like my first time. So for that first challenge, it was definitely nerve wracking. Citrus and eyes. I'm a purely utilitarian orange peeler, so I just get the peel off as quickly as possible. That was not the name of the game in this particular competition. And time. So put down your oranges. Whew, okay. Well done, you guys. 
I'm afraid this does not look like the longest one, Mark. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> okay. This is a contender. Emma. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Emma, you have one shot at getting the question right. Okay. If you get it wrong, it will go to the one with the second longest peel. Okay. Okay? Yep. What is it important to have close to your skin when you're out skiing? Wool. Emma, that's correct. Yes. And you're safe. We are now ready for the second round. The question is, how big is Hardangevida? Immediately, I said, I know this answer. I knew I'd get it right. Go. Nå må deltagerne som ekte opp dagere bygge en varde. Den som på to minutter bygger den høyeste kvikklørnsvarden får svare på spørsmålet, og kan sikre seg en plass videre i Alt for Norge. For the Kit Kats, my strategy is to unwrap as many as I can, maybe for like the first 60 seconds, and then stacking from there, just so I kind of have the advantage of just having more materials to build with. Shit! Camera. <laughs> I was second guessing my technique. I glanced over and saw that uh, everyone else was uh, going for very different strategies. I believe in you, Tamara. Deep breath. So shaky Memphis. right now. And time's up. No touching. Oh! oh I just like looked up in disbelief that like I had finished in time and I had a tower standing and I just pushed back and my knee hit the table. So it's it, it sucks. Okay, Mark, let's see what you made. Oh shit. Dylan, your ward toppled just as time was up. I'm sorry about that. The rest of you have standing wards, and they're fairly equal in height, but the tallest ward was built by Tamara. <gasps> How big is Hardangevida? 3,100 kilometers. Tamara, I'm afraid that's the wrong answer. Wrong? It's wrong. What? I mean, my face just dropped because I didn't understand. I thought he was wrong. That means that the question goes to the person with the second highest ward. And that is you, Mark. All right. I know the 3100 was right, so I'm going to say square miles. Mark, that is the correct answer. You are safe. <laughs> <laughs> It was such a relief. One of the biggest reliefs of my life. Uh, it's been such an amazing experience already, and I can't wait to see what's in store. Expeditions can be dangerous, and if the explorers aren't careful, they can experience something called a whiteout, or snöblindhet. So in this round, you'll be blindfolded. So the question is, what is the Norwegian saying that involves clothes and weather? Ready, set, go! I blinde skal norskamerikanerne nå ta på seg sekk, ski og staver. Den første som får på seg utstyret og sier setningen ut på tur, aldri sur, får svare på spørsmålet. Putting on skis blindfolded was very difficult. There was a little bit of anxiety there because um, I was nervous I would fall or trip on the poles or the skis. Come on guys, come on, come on, come on. Upetur Adresur. Upetur Adresur. Upetur Adresur. Nick. Tja. What is the Norwegian saying that involves clothes and weather? 
I just know they know this one. Um, the Finis Icavora Ver or Caldry Do. Nick, I'm sorry. Didn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan? Um, oh, God. Defin Val I Bada Doro? Dylan? I'm sorry. Tamara? Define Iki Dole Vera Bada Dole Clara. Tamara? You did it. Yeah. <laughs> I was just in tears because I'm just so happy to be to be here. Congratulations. Because I'm not ready for this adventure to be done. Dylan and Nick, we're down to the two of you. In front of you, there's a world map and pictures of 10 famous Norwegian explorers. I will ask you questions and one by one, you will put the right explorer in the right place on the map. Are you ready? Sir. Yeah. In 1888, this explorer was the first to cross a certain place on skis. Who and where? What I learned from our very first challenge is not to second guess myself. So when I've heard the question and someone's name popped in right in my head, that's, the, that's whose name was going on that board. Which Norwegian was the first to reach a place that another explorer always gets the credit for discovering? And what is the place? For the second question, um, the guy that I rap was Leif Erikson. I remembered it, but also, I mean, it's North America, so I think that also clicked into like where home was in a way. Which explorer gave the name to one of the world's largest islands, and where is it? That, that was the one I was unsure about. Largest island. I was thinking about islands. I was like, big islands probably in the ocean. But as soon as I put it down and turned back around for him, I really just did not feel good about that answer. Are we ready? Yeah, yeah. In 1911, this explorer was the first human to set foot where? Going into this last part, everything is at stake for me. So I was contemplating where to put them. Some of them were a little bit more challenging than the other ones. We've reached the last question. Which explorer has a strait named after him? And where is it? Right now, my heart is kind of like beating out of my chest. There is a possibility that this is the end. Dylan and Nick, this is the moment of truth. You've both done your best, and now it's time for the result. The person that has to leave Altronurge and go back to America is. It would mean the world, I continue. I, I have enjoyed myself. It's been a wild adventure, and I just, I don't want it to stop. Winning this challenge would mean so much to me. Nick, I'm sorry. That one question, we good, you? Ain't no thing, but you're going to We're coming back together, though. Yeah, it'll be cool. That man could walk into any room and make everyone smile. Uh, he's just such an infectious personality, um, and everyone just wants to be around him. So it's, 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 it's definitely going to be tough not having him around anymore. So lots of reunions and lots of visits with you, all Nick. of us. Nick, so. I'm going to have to steal this guy from you now, OK? Yeah. Can you come with me, please? Sure. Say goodbye one last time. Bye. Bye, Nick. Bye, Nick. Bye, Nick. I love you. Love you. Thank you. We'll make it. So how do you feel right now, Nick? It's hard. It, it's devastating, really. I mean, I was supposed to meet all my Norwegian family. It's 
my grandma was counting on it. I mean, she wasn't, they're not gonna be mad at me, you know what I'm saying? They're gonna be happy that dude had this adventure, but it's like, they'd be happier if they were coming up to Norway, meeting yeah. the rest of the fam, you know what I'm saying, so. And I don't want you to leave Norway empty-handed, so we've got a book for you. Well, thank you. And it's been such a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. Take care, Nick. See you later. Yeah. Okay, Dad, bye. See you. It's just crazy seeing all these people. Is, it, is this my family? No, that, that's the royal family. <laughs> I was like, no way you guys are sending me home if I'm a king or a prince or none of that. <laughs> oh, I got everybody on here. My dad's even on here, honestly. That's crazy. That's, wi that's wild. Got the records of shirt in 1897. Who had eight children out there? I know I'm going home now. Like this, this fun adventure is fully over. This is my home. <laughs> it says hello, Nicholas. We are your living Norwegian relatives. The Garda family. We hope you've enjoyed your stay in Norway. And we hope to see you here at the Gator Farm someday. We get the book and the contact information. It's like, I mean, it means, it means a lot. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just a lot overall. I didn't get to meet him in person this time, but there's always next time. I'll be back, bring my mama, and I mean, we'll, we'll see him. Expedition Norge er dessverre over for Nick, men resten av gjengen fortsetter turen innover vidda, og neste uke skal de feire at de overlevde stormen med en pinne for landet på afterski. Vi ses neste uke. Velkommen til afterski på Hanne Fjettuge! an absolute blast. Monster.